हेलो एवरीवन आई एम अमूल्या असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल एंड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स इंजीनियरिंग साई विद्या इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी सो इन टुडे सेशन आई एम सॉल्विंग द फर्स्ट प्रॉब्लम इन मॉडल टू इन द लास्ट सेशन वी हैव सीन द प्रोसीजर टू सॉल्व द प्रॉब्लम्स ऑन अ सिमेट्रिकल थ्री फेस फॉल्ट सो दिस दिस इज द फर्स्ट प्रॉब्लम बेस्ड ऑन दैट प्रोसीजर फॉर ऑल द प्रॉब्लम्स इन द मॉडल टू वी आर फॉलोइंग द सेम प्रोसीजर so before practicing the problem first go through the procedure once so it will makes you easy to understand and solve the problem easily so now look at the given problem a 25 mva 13.2 kV synchronous generator is connected to a synchronous motor both the machines having the same ratings with a reactance of 15% and the generator and the motor it is connected with the help of a transmission line having a reactance of a 10% so on a machine base so the synchronous and generator both will be considered as a machine base here now the motor is drawing 18 megawatt at 0.8 per factor leading operating at 12.9 kilovolt so that means these are the ratings of the motor nothing but the load so the in understood that the system is loaded when a short circuit occurs at its terminals that means a short circuit fault has occurs near to the motor side so we need to find out the subtransient current uh, in the motor generator and also on the fault side so now based on this given data we'll write the first single line diagram so generator is connected to motor with the help of a transmission line xtl so the reactance of the transmission line given is 10% so here a three phase fault is occurs near to the motor side so here we will represent occurrence of a three phase fault or like this way also we can represent the generator and motor both having the same rating 25 mva 13.2 kV x is equal to 15 percentage similarly for the motor also 25 mva 13.2 kV x is equal to 15 percentage and after that they have given the ratings of the motor nothing but load that is 18 megawatt 0.8 per factor leading and the voltage is 12.9 kV so these are the ratings of the load so remember when these three details are given in the problem means understood that the system given system is loaded so this is the rating of the load so now based on that we'll proceed with the solution now look at the first procedure first step in the procedure to obtain the per unit reactance diagram from a one line diagram so we need to convert the one line diagram into a reactance diagram so now going with the procedure step 1 so one thing you have to remember in between the generator and the motor there is no transformer is coming so if there is no transformer is there means there will be no change in voltage will be takes place the same generated voltage will deliver to the load nothing but motor so the mva base of the system will be 25 mva and kilovolt base of the system is 13.2 kV so this is mva base new and kV base new so this remains same for the entire system so now considering this new value and the old value so that we will get the reactance for the generator as 15% converting into per unit is 0.15 then for the motor 0.15 per unit because the old value and the new values both are same for the generator and also for the motor so similarly converting the transmission line into per unit will get 0.1 per unit so now i'll draw the per unit reactance diagram for a given single line diagram so here we can observe there is one generator connected to a transmission line then we have a motor is there so the reactance of the generator motor is xm will be equal to 0.15 per unit the transmission line will be 0.1 that is j0.1 per unit similarly for the generator j0.15 per unit this is the generator source voltage and this is the motor source voltage 
and here we have to represent the occurrence of the fault that is at this particular point so here we have a three phase fault has occurs so this is step one now proceeding with the step two that is calculation of a v pf value so here i told you in the second step what we have to do we need to identify whether the system is loaded or unloaded so from the given data it is clearly understood that the system is loaded so next what we have to do see in the procedure if the system is loaded means first we have to calculate vpf value by using this formula and after that calculate il value in per unit so now we'll go according to the procedure the step 2 calculation of vpf value so this is the formula from the procedure vpf actual actual is nothing but given data now look at the given data on the motor side the voltage is 12.9 kilovolt divided by vpf base base is nothing but step 1 value we have to see so in the step 1 the kilovolt base is 13.2 kilovolt so now dividing these two we will get the answer as 0.97 per unit so this is the answer for vpf per unit so after the calculation of a pre fault voltage next we have to calculate the load current so the formula is il per unit is equal to il actual divided by il base so we have a again separate formula is there for the actual calculation and also for the base calculation so we'll calculate one by one now we are doing the il actual calculation p divided by root 3 into v into cos phi at an angle of cos inverse of phi so this is the formula from the procedure i have written il actual is this formula and il base excluding the cos phi this is the formula so now actual means you know that it is the given data now look at the given data so this is the rating of the motor that is nothing but the load details so power is is equal to 18 megawatt so power is 18 megawatt and root 3 voltage is 12.9 kilovolt 12.9 kilovolt 10 power 3 and the power factor is 0.8 then at an angle of cos inverse of phi so since the power factor is leading so the sign will be plus only cos inverse of 0.8 so after substituting all this values we'll get il actual value as 1007 at an angle of 36.86 degree ampere so this is the answer for the il actual calculation next similarly we'll do the il base calculation il base will be equal to the same formula but there will be no power factor p divided by that is p base divided by root 3 into v base so here the base power and the base voltage in the step 1 we have to consider the base power is 25 mva 25 into 10 power 6 divided by root 3 into v base is 13.2 into 10 power 3 so after dividing this we'll get the answer as 1093.4 ampere next we need to substitute this in the per unit formula so this is our per unit formula il per unit will be equal to so here actual value is 1007 at an angle of 36.86 divided by and here the base value is 1093.4 so both the values are expressed in amperes only so ampere and ampere get cancels so the remaining is dimensionless so that is why the we are representing the per unit as a dimensionless quantity so we'll get the answer as 0.92 at an angle of 36.86 degree per unit so this is the answer for the il per unit so in the step 2 we have calculated vpf value because the system is a loaded system it is this is a loaded system we calculated vpf value and we have calculated the load current also so this complete step 2 so next we are going to proceed with the step 3 that is fault current calculation so for the calculation of a fault current in per unit so observe the procedure here so this is the formula if per unit will be equal to vth by zth that is we are using a thevenin's theorem here 
so we know that vth will be equal to vpf that is from the step 2 so directly i'll write here using the same formula so if per unit will be equal to vth by zth since we know that vth will be equal to vpf in per unit so this value from the step 2 we have obtained 0.92 same value i'll write so next what we have to do we need to find out zth value so next is to find zth so as you have observed in the procedure i have taken one example and i have shown you so where the fault has occurred so that is going to divide the system so the same way we are going to write the given single line diagram also now observe so this is the given single line diagram of our problem so here excluding these two source voltages we need to write the same network for the calculation of zth so this is the reactance of the generator transmission line then we have a motor so this is j0.15 per unit j0.1 per unit and this is j0.15 per unit and this is the point where the three phase fault has occurs so in the same way we need to simplify this so these two reactances now are connecting in series so adding 0.15 with 1 we will get 0.25 j0.25 and that is connected in parallel with the motor reactance j0.15 so now we will use the parallel formula for the calculation of zth so that is zth will be equal to j0.25 is connected in parallel with j0.15 so now simplify and uh, we will get the final answer that is j0.25 into j0.15 divided by j0.25 plus j0.15 so like this way we need to calculate this is the answer for zth j0.09 per unit so now zth and vth are substitute in the fault current formula so i'll write once again if per unit will be equal to vth is 0.97 divided by and zth is j0.09 so that will be equal to so we will get the answer 10.42 at an angle of minus 90 degree per unit so remember this answer because this we will be using in the subtransient calculation so we have calculated the subtransient fault current in per unit so this completes step 3 so next we are going to proceed with the step 4 calculation step 4 is the subtransient current calculation in per unit so for the subtransient current calculation first before that what we have to do so this is the formula post fault current or the subtransient current so pre fault current il is already calculated in step 2 so first we have to calculate change in current at the fault point so how do we find it change in current at the fault point means so at the fault point we need to connect the thevenin's voltage by reversing its polarity so that we'll get two different values of current or the change in current values so this is what we need to calculate first so after that we will calculate the post fault or the subtransient current at the generator and also on the motor side so the next is in the same fifth fourth step change in current calculation so but before that we will write the same circuit by connecting the thevenin's voltage with the reverse polarity so now observe here so this is the reactance of the generator transmission line and next is the motor so here we need to connect the thevenin's voltage with the reverse polarity vth so here i1 current is flowing and here the current i2 will be flowing the reactance is j0.1 per unit and this is j0.15 this is also j0.15 so now we will calculate the values of i1 and i2 separately so i1 is equal to so vth divided by these two reactances that is by using ohm's law j 0.15 plus 
j 0.1 so vth value already we have calculated that is 0.97 divided by j 0.25 so we will get the answer as minus 3.88 j in per unit so next similarly i will calculate i2 value i2 will be equal to vth by the reactance value vth divided by the reactance is j 0.15 0.97 divided by j 0.15 so we will get the answer for the i2 as 6.46 at an angle of minus 90 degree in per unit so you can keep the final answer either in the rectangular or in the polar form but in the calculator you need to do it properly keeping in the polar as well as in the rectangular form so don't get confused in both the form you can keep the answers so here instead of writing the rectangular i can convert this into a polar as 3.9 at an angle of minus 90 degree per unit will get so in both the form you can keep the answers so next we need to calculate the subtransient current so the formula for the subtransient current so that is look at the procedure now since you know that the system is loaded you need to use the loaded formula ig double dash per unit will be equal to il plus i1 so il value already we have obtained in the step one and i1 value just now we have calculated so now we calculate ig double dash and similarly i am double dash so now observe according to the procedure i have calculated subtransient current at the generator and also at the motor side il value i already calculated in step two so here you can observe IL actual divided by IL base we got the answer as 0.92 at an angle of 36.86 so the same answer I have substituted here so I have got the answer I kept it in the polar and here this one I have kept it in the rectangular form so this is a rectangular this is polar so this completes step 4 and in the step 5 already the values we have calculated in the per unit and that we have to convert into actual values so how do we convert means this is the per unit formula per unit will be equal to actual by base so the same formula will write with respect to actual so per unit into base same way we will write for the generator and also for the motor meantime we need to calculate the base current also p base by root 3 v base this is step 5 now observe ig double dash actual will be ig double dash per unit into i base so i base is nothing but the formula i'll write separately here p base into root 3 v base so p base is nothing but base power and the base voltage you need to consider from the step one values observe here this is the base power 25 mva and the base voltage 13.2 kilo so i'll calculate here because the same value will be applicable wherever i base is there in the step 5 10 power 3 divided by root 3 into voltage is 13.2 into 10 power this is 10 power 6 so we will get the answer as 1093 okay so now by taking this value we need to substitute here for the generator and also for the motor this is applicable when the base voltages and the base power is same but in some problem if there is a transformer is present means this i base calculation will be different since both are having the same base values so i base value will remain the same here so 1093 and after multiplying i'll get the actual value for the generator is 3761.5 at an angle of minus 77.6 degree ampere it is so in same way i am going to calculate for the motor and also for the fault point so i have calculated for im and if dash also same way i have substituted here and the base current will be same here so now observe for the if double dash actual calculation if double dash per unit so this answer we have calculated in the step 3 observe here so this is the step 3 calculation if per unit is vth by zth there we have found if answer so this answer i am multiplied with the base current so that we have got the answer for all the subtransient currents in actual so this is what our problem is thank you